after the uh, hatches are closed to the uh, Soyuz spacecraft that will be coming up shortly, uh, the uh, returning crew of Wiseman, Gerst, and Soraya will be quite busy. They will uh, put the uh, Soyuz on autonomous power, uh, taking it off station power that it has been on since shortly after uh, the Soyuz docked to Rosviet uh, back on May 29th. The uh, crew will be performing uh, leak checks in their Sokol uh, launch and entry suits. They will depressurize the top compartment of the three-section Soyuz spacecraft. That's the orbital module. The orbital module uh, contains all of the uh, key systems uh, for uh, life support uh, on board the, the International Space Station, as well as uh, the docking probe and the docking system on the Soyuz side of uh, the docking interface uh, to it and the International Space Station. The crew actually sits in the center section. You see there the descent module. Uh, that uh, contains uh, three seats. Uh, the center seat occupied by the Soyuz commander, Max Sarayev. In the left seat is board engineer number one, uh, Reed Wiseman. And in the right seat will be Alexander Gerst for this trip back home, as was the configuration of the crew uh, for launch uh, five and a half months ago. The uh, lower section of the Soyuz is called the Instrumentation and Service Module. That contains uh, all of the avionics and uh, the uh, propulsion systems for the Soyuz vehicle, which will be conducting uh, two separation burns uh, once the Soyuz undocks from Rosvia to move to a safe distance away from the International Space Station. Uh, to be exact, uh, the Soyuz will move to about 12 kilometers away from the International Space Station for the deorbit burn that will take place at 9.05 p.m. Central Time tonight. That will be a four-minute, 41-second braking maneuver uh, to slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second and allow it to drop out of orbit for its 55-minute uh, descent back into the Earth's atmosphere with its computers honed in on the landing site uh, just to the northeast of uh, the town of Arkalik, Kazakhstan, and a parachute-assisted landing that will take place at 9.58 uh, and 33 seconds p.m. Central Time this evening. Today's um, undocking and landing by the Expedition 41 crew uh, culminates an extraordinarily busy time aboard the International Space Station that saw three spacewalks conducted uh, within a two-week period, uh, two of them uh, by Reed Wiseman uh, on the U.S. segment out of the Quest airlock, one with Alexander Gerst, one with Butch Wilmore, Max Sarayev uh, conducting a spacewalk uh, right after that along with Alexander Samakutiaev out of the Piers docking compartment. Uh, the three spacewalks, uh, the arrival of a Progress resupply ship, and uh, a tremendous amount of scientific research uh, to accompany all of that activity uh, has kept uh, the crew uh, extremely busy, even working weekends over the past several weeks to accomplish all of the work uh, that had been laid at their feet. Station Moscow, Space to Ground 2 for Alexander. Station Moscow, Space to Ground 1 for Alexander.
А, Николай, на связи. Александр, ну по нашим данным камеры у тебя выключены, так понимаю. Go ahead, Николай. Well, as far as we understand, the camera is off. Have you turned it off yourself? А, Николай, на связи, на связи. Отвечаю за СГ-1, я вас говорю, все. Саш, он, у нас как бы кубон пошел. Саша. We are receiving the key. We have KU band. Have you turned off the camera? Well, actually, we had have had it turned off for 21 minutes, and we'll be ready for the ceremony. Well, just keep in mind, uh, KU band is not endless, so well, we'll be here on Space to Ground 2 from MRM 1 with the video, and we're going to confirm that we have the video, and then. Um, have the ceremony. All right, Alexander, because we got a little bit worried. At 21, 21 minutes. Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolev, outside of Moscow. You see a view uh, now from a camera on the balcony overlooking that flight control room uh, as uh, they uh, are coordinating uh, with uh, Alexander Samokutyaev on board the station uh, for the uh, activation of the camera that's inside the Rosviet module. On the Earth-facing side, uh, Rosviet uh, mated uh, to the Zarya module of the station. The Zarya was the first element of the International Space Station, launched uh, almost 16 years ago on November 20th, 1998, on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The uh, Soyuz spacecraft, the 14M spacecraft that uh, launched Wilmore, uh, Sarova, and Samokutyaev in late September, that is mated to the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. And there is a view uh, from external cameras on the truss of the International Space Station looking at uh, the Soyuz TMA-13M attached uh, to Rosvia. That is the vehicle uh, that uh, Sarayev, Wiseman, and Gerst will be entering a short time from now. And uh, from Rosvia, a view of Max Sarayev. Max, you're looking good. Moscow station on space to ground two. And there is your departing crew, Wiseman, Gerst, and Sarayev. Uh, the final farewells as uh, Elena Sarova wishes uh, Wiseman and Gerst all the best for a soft landing. And Barry Wilmore, the new uh, station commander. Sarayev and uh, Wiseman and Gerst now making their way inside uh, the Soyuz TMA-13F.
The um, shirt that uh, Max Sarayev is wearing uh, came uh, from his uh, children, uh, delivered on a progress vehicle, uh, written on the shirt, Best Papa. Alexander Samokutiaev uh, also uh, saying farewell uh, to uh, the three uh, crew members, and that's Butch Wilmore there, uh, saying goodbye to his Navy colleague and uh, NASA friend, uh, Reed Wiseman and Alexander Gerst, of course. Final farewells uh, prior to the uh, closing of the hatch. And uh, as the crew uh, prepares to close the hatch uh, to the Soyuz, uh, the vehicle is now on autonomous power. One final uh, picture being taken uh, by uh, the crew remaining on board the International Space Station. Sama Kutiaev, uh, the Soyuz commander of the other Soyuz that is docked to the station. He was at the controls of the Soyuz for its launch and docking to the International Space Station back on September 26th, when he launched uh, from Baikonur along with Elena Sorova and Butch Wilmore. We're going to be losing our uh, downlink television signal uh, from the station here shortly. Again, the three departing crew members, Max Sarayev, Reed Wiseman, and Alexander Gerst, are inside uh, the Soyuz TMA-13M. The uh, spacecraft is on autonomous power. Alexander Samakutiaev uh, will be working uh, with uh, Sarayev to close their respective hatches uh, just a moment or two from now. Uh, Все, выполняйте по 85 ручное закрытие. У нас заканчивается кубент, и мы рискуем не увидеть. One final check uh, by Sarayev uh, with uh, Russian mission controllers in Karyov prior to hatch closure on the uh, camera configurations uh, for the Soyuz spacecraft, both inside and uh, for the uh, exterior engineering view. And there goes the hatch on the Soyuz side. 
Sarayev bidding farewell to Alexander Samakutiaev. The uh, Soyuz hatch closure uh, coming at uh, 3.27 p.m. Central Time. We are standing by for your report of the uh, hatch closure of BOSU. And we passed out of range uh, for the moment uh, of a downlink TV capability from the uh, International Space Station through our tracking and data relay satellite system. But uh, everything uh, has gone extremely uh, smoothly so far. Uh, the hatch uh, to the Soyuz TMA-13M closing at 3.27 p.m. Central Time. Uh, the next time we see uh, Reed Wiseman, Max Arrive, and Alexander Gerst will be uh, on the ground in a very chilly landing site in north-central Kazakhstan. We heard uh, that, uh, you know, uh, they knocked, so everything is fine. So BOSU, or orbital module uh, in docking interface hatch, is closed. Okay, and also station hatch is closed as well. Uh, okay, vehicle hatch is closed. And uh, so we heard the knocking, so everything is fine. So all the rollers are in the slots. Everything is nominal. Okay, so now we're standing by uh, uh, for the report of the closure of the station hatch. Okay, Moscow, we are closing the station hatch. Mission Control Moscow, station hatch is closed, uh, the rollers are out, so all looks good. Perfect, thank you. And uh, the uh, ISS hatch is closed now on the Rosviet module. Uh, the Soyuz uh, hatch closure occurring at 3.27 p.m. Central Time, three minutes later at 3.30 p.m. Central Time, the station hatch is closed. This portion. Thank you. Uh, Maxim, now on page 86, we want for you, waiting for your report. Okay, copy. We will report on page 86. Hey, Max. Hey, Max. Maxim, we have uh, three minutes still to finish all the activities on page 86 so we can uh, monitor what you have done via command link. We have five minutes total, but you have three minutes to finish. Okay, copy. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, to recap, the uh, three crew members aboard the International Space Station who have called it home since uh, May 29th are uh, preparing to depart the complex. Uh, Reed Wiseman, uh, the NASA flight engineer, Soyuz Commander Max Soraya, who has served as the station commander during Expedition 41, and European Space Agency flight engineer Alexander Gerst, are uh, buttoned up inside uh, the Soyuz TMA-13M spacecraft. Uh, the hatch 
uh, to the Soyuz and to the International Space Station's Rossviet module, having uh, swung closed uh, just a few minutes ago. Everything uh, now being uh, prepared uh, for the crew to don uh, their Sokol launch and entry suits and uh, to conduct leak checks of the docking interface between the Soyuz and Rossviet that will set the stage uh, for the undocking of uh, the TMA-13M spacecraft less than three hours from now. This is the uh, in work. Yes, we got it. Also, monitoring S11, it is illuminated perfect uh, uh, D8. In the uh, town of Kustanai, Kazakhstan, in northern Kazakhstan, just across the border from Russia, the uh, Ros Aviatsa, the Russian uh, Search and Recovery Forces, and teams of uh, NASA and European Space Agency uh, recovery personnel are uh, still asleep at this hour, but they'll be uh, awakened a short time from now to begin uh, to make their way uh, to the airport in Kustanai and to board a series of uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters. Uh, eight helicopters will be deployed from Kustanai uh, toward the landing site, the prime landing site to the northeast of Arkalik. Uh, two other helicopters will fly midway between the prime landing site that you see in that bullseye and the uh, ballistic landing site, to, to, which uh, is located to the southeast of the prime landing site. Two others will be at the ballistic site itself. That ballistic landing site uh, would be uh, the site uh, in which the Soyuz would land uh, in the unlikely event it would experience a problem uh, that would prevent it uh, from reaching the prime landing site, uh, a shortfall, if you will, in uh, its landing trajectory. But everything is in good shape. Uh, this Soyuz has uh, performed flawlessly uh, throughout uh, the course of its launch, docking, and uh, the five and a half months it has been attached to the International Space Station. Where, so we are expecting a uh, nominal performance from the Soyuz throughout the rest of the uh, afternoon and the evening uh, as uh, the events unfold before us. The weather at the landing site is extremely cold, uh, right now about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to warm up only into the low to mid-20s uh, by the time the Soyuz touches down at uh, 9.58 p.m. Central Time, which will be 9.58 a.m. Monday morning in Kazakhstan, about an hour and 19 minutes after sunrise. There are several uh, decks of clouds uh, that are expected uh, to greet uh, the returning crew members as they descend under their large main parachute toward the landing site. Uh, the uh, lowest of those three decks could be uh, accompanied by fog, so we are expecting some diminished visibility as the, the Soyuz uh, penetrates those cloud decks, making its way toward the landing site, which, uh, if all goes as planned, is located about 53 miles to the northeast of the town of Arkalik. Of the eight helicopters that will be deploying to the prime landing site, four of those helicopters will take off um, in the early morning hours, uh, perhaps about uh, two to three hours from now. They will uh, make a refueling stop in Arkalik uh, before they make their way to the landing zone. The other four will fly directly from Kustanai to the landing site. That's a flight of about two hours and 15 minutes in duration. Maxim is uh, the uh, Spaceflight Meteorology Group has just issued its updated landing site forecast uh, for touchdown, uh, which again is expected uh, just over six hours from now. Uh, the temperature at landing time is expected to be 23 degrees Fahrenheit uh, during the ground recovery operations with a wind chill factor of just 14 degrees Fahrenheit extremely uh, cold as compared to the uh, pristine weather that uh, greeted the last Soyuz crew that came home back in September. Uh, the winds uh, uh, will be out of the southeast at about seven knots. Again, three decks of clouds, scattered clouds at uh, 1,200 feet, a broken ceiling at 2,000 feet, and a broken ceiling at 25,000 feet with some breaks in those clouds. Uh, some thicker clouds and light snow is uh, located just to the west of the staging city in Kustanai. Uh, however, uh, the weather is not expected to be accompanied uh, by precipitation at the landing site itself. So we'll uh, be standing by for any updates uh, to the weather, but uh, it will be uh, a bit uh, more cloud-challenged, if you will, 
than uh, was uh, the case in September when uh, the last Soyuz crew returned under clear skies and almost pristine conditions. The International Space Station currently orbiting at an altitude of 262 statute miles, about to begin a swing uh, on this orbit that will carry it from northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. Check the electrode position. Make sure they're tight enough. Yes, and we should forget also to get the uh, salt supplement. Yes. Exactly. Okay, go ahead with your leg check. Stand on the suit. And that will be Donny Pair, page 88. Right now we are on page uh, 87. We are closing. So both uh, on the International Space Station and in the uh, city of Kustanai in northern Kazakhstan, preparations well underway. Uh, the first uh, group of uh, recovery personnel uh, will be making their way to the Kustanai airport a short time from now. Uh, they are expected to take off in the first uh, quartet of Russian Mi-8 helicopters. Uh, about two hours from now, they'll be flying to Arkalik, Kazakhstan, to refuel. The other uh, four helicopters earmarked uh, for flight uh, to the prime landing site uh, will be departing about two hours from now for the airport, and they should be airborne about four hours from now. That will put them in the vicinity of the landing site right around landing time, which is uh, scheduled at uh, 9.58 p.m. Central Time tonight, 9.58 a.m. Kazakhstan time on Monday morning. Seven four six. So with that, uh, we'll wrap up our coverage of uh, the hatch closure that occurred about uh, 20 minutes ago as uh, the Soyuz uh, departing crew of Reed Wiseman, Alexander Gerst, and Max Sarayev are uh, now inside uh, their vehicle as they uh, are beginning to uh, conduct uh, checks of their Sokol launch and entry suits as well as uh, other uh, systems on board the Soyuz vehicle. They're on docking scheduled less than three hours from now. We'll be back with you at 6.15 uh, p.m. Central Time, 7.15 p.m. Eastern Time for our undocking coverage with the actual physical separation of the Soyuz from the station and the start, the formal start, of Expedition 42 at 6.31 p.m. Central Time. Until then, uh, we bid you a good afternoon. We'll be back with you in a few hours from Mission Control in Houston.